Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our training. Um, very good to have you here as well. Uh, so we'll be continuing from where we left off the last time, and this time we're going to be looking at how we would basically build our first robot together. So this particular session is about we building our first uh, robot together. Okay, so it's going to be interesting. I uh, remember if you have questions, leave your questions down below. Okay, so um, here's what we'll be basically be talking about in our session for today. So we'll look at some best practices. Now, I'm going to be taking this course from my perspective in terms of what I go through and what I feel is basically the best approach. Now, we would be obviously starting off with a simple but but the concept, the idea behind how we go about it, you can take this and implement it in even more complex EAs, okay? Um, so we'll look at uh, basically the three things that we pay attention to with regards to our bots. We want to get information, we want to basically get uh, a clear statement around them, and which are the execution logic, the entry criteria, and the exit criteria. And then I'll show you something that I tend to do, especially when I'm looking to build uh, more advanced uh, bots by using a flowchart, at least drafting a flowchart, even if it's just on paper, to explain the flow of, of, um, of the logic, okay? So it's going to make a lot of sense as we progress, okay? So now, uh, when it comes to developing a bot or an EA, defining the trade logic is extremely important if you want to get the desired results. So when, when, you, when, I, when you hear the term trade logic, think about the strategy, right? So, um, I don't care whether it's whether you're a manual trader or whether you a trade you use you know your building bots or if you trade technicals or you trade fundamentals. The only way you're going to be successful in this business is if you have a predefined strategy that you follow, um, you know, judiciously when the parameters are met. So the same idea applies here. You know, anybody can build a bot. Whether it's going to be profitable or not is anybody's guess. However. Just the same way most traders don't make money in the forex markets, most traders don't even have a strategy or a system that they trade. So um, this is not just only applicable to the trading, but it's also very applicable to your own personal trading style. You want to have a system, a strategy, a logic, right? So the logic behind the trade, such as if this happens or this and this happens, I would look to buy Right. Otherwise, if this happens or this and this happens, I'd look to sell. So that criteria that you look for is the logic behind the trade entry. And then you're now going to define the entry criteria, the exit criteria, and all of those things. Okay. Now the goal, right? The goal should be to break down the should go, the goal should be to break down uh the, the the reasons for your strategy in three key questions so why you want to answer these three key questions this would basically enable you to uh to simplify your trading idea um so that even a layman can understand it so the first point should be what will trigger a buying or selling action right so you ask yourself you don't just open the chat and place it buy or open the chat and place it sell you open the chart, you analyze, and then if you see setting conditions met, then you buy. So in the same way, you ask yourself, what and what conditions do I want to see or do I want my bots to look out for to open a buy? Or what and what do I want to see to open a sell? Then the second question would be, how do I enter the trade based on my system? Now, let's say you are a uh, price action trader and let's say you trade pin bars or engulfing candlesticks formations. Now, if you see a bullish pin bar, now let's say based on your system, you see a bullish pin bar and that triggers your buying action. How do you enter the trade? Do you enter the trade when the bullish pin bar is still forming? Or do you enter the trade after the bullish pin bar has formed? This is how you enter the trade. So some people might be, okay, at, at the close of that candle, I'll enter a buy. Some other people might be at the close of the candle, I'll enter a buy at the 50% retracement of the pin bar or the engulfing bar. That is the point two, how you enter the trade. And then the third point will be, how do you exit the trade? Okay, so we'll discuss each of every one of these, beginning with the trade execution logic. Now, you want to define clearly what conditions should be met before your bot looks to buy or sell. Now, this can be a single condition or multiple conditions that all have to be true before a trade is executed, right? Now, for example, imagine that we're looking to, so the bot will actually be looking to first of all build. It's going to be a very simple bot that takes advantage 
or takes into consideration the moving average. So we're going to be looking at the bot or trying to build a bot that just basically takes advantage or looks at the crossover of moving average. Very simple strategy, but can, can actually be quite powerful. So the whole idea is, well, in a bullish market, well, price tends to go up like so. And um, if we place moving averages, uh, they would most likely be below price. So in a bullish market, you would have those you have uh, the moving average below price. Now, the market doesn't stay at a single condition. So it, basically, we're looking to take advantage of the crossover areas, right? However, the market, when it becomes bearish, would definitely would also look to change shape. So let's say the market now becomes quite bearish like this. What will happen is, so let me, uh, the moving averages would do something like this, right? Where this one would now cross over the other one. You know, should use yellow as well there. Okay, so basically, this um, moving average crossover system is all about taking advantage or looking for buys or sales at the area where this crossover happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a bot, right? And we're going to build a bot that basically takes into consideration the crossover of the moving average on that specific time frame, and then execute trades based on them. So as you can see, we have what we've just done now is we've defined our, uh, our, our the logic for our trade. So what we look for to buy or what we look for to sell. So in this, okay, uh, sorry about that. Um, so let me go back to sharing my screen. Okay, so basically we'll be using the moving averages, the crossover of the moving average as decision makers as to our buying or selling idea. Okay, so we're going to be using the 10 and the 20 exponential moving average. So when the 10 moving 10 exponential moving average crosses above the 20, we'll look to buy. And when the 20 moving average or the 10 moving average cross below the 20, we look to sell. That is our trade execution logic. Now the next point to be, so how do we enter the trade, <clears throat> right? Now, entry criteria. This defines exactly how you enter the trade once all the predefined conditions are met. Now, just because we're using moving average, you can use a combination of, you can say, oh, if the moving average crossover, if the RSI is doing, has gotten to this point, if the stochastic has gotten to this point, executes a trade, right? So in the same way, once those conditions have been met, you now need to define how do you enter the trade. Do you enter while the moving average is crossing over or you want to wait for a candle to close right so this is how you define your entry criteria now this also includes when the trade is to be open and the lot size to be used right so all of those are part of the entry criteria okay now the exit criteria um, would now include how you exit the trades in eventuality of profit or eventuality of loss so this define how the robot would exit the current open positions Right, so it includes um, the take profit level and the stop loss level. If you're using a fixed stop loss or dynamic stop loss, we'll all look at that in our example um, of our robot building. Okay, so basically, what we've just done now is simplify the whole idea behind our trade. And with this concept, now even a layman can understand what we are trying to accomplish just with this concept. Now we'll now say, okay, um, remember I said I was going to show you something that I that, is, that can be quite helpful for you, um, which is in using flow charts. Now, um, what we'll do is we will take, uh, we will take uh, basically what we've just discussed with regards to our building of the EA and then break it down into a flow chart uh, that we can then use or basically help us um, illustrate or describe what, what steps need to be done and what needs to happen before a step is taken. Okay. So um, if possible, this is this is entirely up to you. This would also using a flow chart would make it easier for you when you're looking to build bot. Now for the example of um, the bots we just uh, we are looking to build, which is the moving average crossover bot. Let's look at an example of a potential or a flow chart, what it will look like. Okay. So as you can see here on my screen, we have this so let me just move this over here. Okay, so we have this uh, flow chart describing or basically the criteria or the conditions that needs to be met. Right. So the first point would be because when you when you attach a bot to your chart, you you, you don't want to, you you want the bot to be able to um, be aware right of other trades placed by. So let's say you have attached the bot to the chart. You don't want the bot to just be taking trade every single time. You want it to also take note of whether it has opened a previous trade, okay? 
And that's why we look at the first point here, which is check trade, check if there's an open trade on the chart. So if there's an open trade on the chart, right, at this point, we will then, um, you know, there are two answers, there are two options answers to this question. So it's either the answer is yes, there's an open trade on the chart, or the answer is no, there's no open trade on the chart. Now, if there's an open trade on the chart, what we want the bots to do is to check if the exit conditions are met. Okay. Now, if the answer is no, what we want the bots to do is to check if the condition for opening a trade is met. Now, based on what we are building, we said we're looking, we're going to be using 10 EME and the 20 EME, right? So if so, what we want the bot to do is check two things. The first one is check if the 10 exponential moving average has crossed above the 20 exponential moving average. So we'll use this sign, X as crossing greater than, that's crossing above, right? And then x uh, less than as crossing below. So what this means here is that we're checking if the 10 exponential moving average has crossed above the 20. Now, if the answer is yes, right, it will look to do what? Open a buy trade and then impute the stop loss and the take profits, right? So in our first example, we're going to build a bot that uses a fixed stop loss and a fixed take profit, okay? Now, otherwise, if the answer is no, it will check if the 10 exponential moving average has crossed below the 20 exponential moving average. And then if the answer is yes, it will open a sell, impute the stop loss and the take profits. So this way, what we've just done is essentially we have uh, built, if this flowchart explains the logic behind our trade, how trades, what, what is required for a trade to be executed, how the trade to be executed and what stop loss and take profits or how it would be um, imputed. Okay, so this this now when we're building the bots, we can obviously reference this, and it will make it quite easier. So, for instance, let's say you check um, the moving average, and then you check the RSI, right? And then you check stochastic, and then if everything aligns, then you buy. You know, you you have your bots look through all of those processes before a trade is taken. So this is the basically kind of um, the importance of looking for uh, or having a flow chart um, description, uh, description to enable you, make it easier for you to build your bots. Now, in this particular video, we're going to be, we're just basically going to be running through um, the quite, um, you know, building our first bot. We'll actually build our first bot and we'll build a bot that does exactly this, what is labeled here on the screen. Although we would not, um, We'll, we'll test it in the next in the next video. So we'll build it. I'll show you how it's done. Then I'll show you how to, we can test it. Uh, how we can back test using the 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 um the option available for you on your MT4 or your MT5. And then in that in the next video, we'll also see how we can op, op, um, basically optimize this a little bit. Okay. So we're going to build a bot that will be using the uh. Let me just go back here. So we'll be using the, um, taking advantage of the crossover of the moving average, using a fixed stop loss of, let's say, 50 pips and a fixed take profit of 100 pips, so two to one, okay? And then in the next one, we'll build the same bot, but this time, instead of exiting with fixed stop loss and take profit, we're going to use it kind of like a dynamic stop loss and take profit, okay? So what we'll do now is we'll just jump over to the FX Dreamer area. Uh, we'll first of all, look at what the what the system is supposed to look like. So you can see this is the moving average. This is the 20 and the 10 exponential moving average. And then basically what we are looking to do is execute trades at the crossover of those areas. So this would be a sell. This would be a buy. Uh, this would be a sell. Okay. So basically this would also, this would be a, a buy down here. So we're going to be looking to execute trades at the, at the, at the, crossover of the moving averages. Okay, so what we'll do now is we would go over to, where's my mouse? Um, to our FX Dreamers workspace here. What we're going to do is we're going to just delete everything here. Um, so let's delete this. Okay, and let's delete all of this. And let's build this from fresh. I, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So remember, like you said, we've named our FX projects. Okay. Now there's something I, okay, let me, let me, there's something I would also want us to do. So let me just delete everything here so we can all do it together. Okay. Let's take this away. Okay. Now, um, yeah. So now if you jump back to our 
actual flowchart or what we are trying to accomplish, you'd see that there are a number of things that we need. So basically, uh, we'll be needing the exponential moving average. We'll also be needing our stop loss and take profit parameters and also our lot size, basically what lot size. So um, what we can do, for those of you who are familiar with programming, you understand the whole idea of declaring variables. So we're going to declare our variables before so that we can call on them later, right? Now, so, but don't worry, it's not gonna program you know, anything. It, it's just a simple concept. Now, so what we'll do is, you know, one of the things I tend to do is, um. Okay, let's see. I think this is going to be easier when I show you and then we'll come back and, and optimize it. So let's just basically build our bots. So the first thing we want to do based on our flowchart is to do what, right? We want to check if there, there's an open trade. Uh, you please go away. Okay, so we want to check if there's an open trade. That's what it's asking us to do, check if there's an open trade. Now on the FX Dreamer, if you go over to this um, check trade order count, right? You'll see no trades. So if we drag this, this is just, Basically, this just refers to if there are no trades. Uh, now, remember, you want to be on, on tick, not on any of these other ones. You want to be on, on tick. That means you want your boss to be checking every single price tick, right? Now, um, if there are no trades, so we can double click on this to modify it, remember? Um, so if we double click on it, we can change it to if we're looking for only buys or sells, but we want it to be both buy and sell. So if there are no buy or sell trades, that's what this means, right? What do we want to do? We go back to our chat. We want If there are no buy or sell trades, we want to check what the indicators, the 10 and the 20 exponential moving average. So we come back here. Now, if you come to this condition, um, this is this condition tab here, right? If you come to this condition tab here, uh, we can just drag one of these conditions, right? So it's just, you can see it's just a simple drag and drop. So we drag one of the conditions, uh, one of the buy conditions, one of the conditions here, and we can modify this condition. So, um, so we modify conditions to meet the criteria of what we're looking for. So what is the condition for buy, right? We're saying if the, the 10 exponential moving average crosses above the 20 exponential moving average, that is when we look for buy. So we're going to need to impute the condition to look. Okay, um, sorry about that again. Uh, this thing just keeps going away. Okay, so um, just like uh, I mentioned, we are looking at. Let me just pull this back up again. Okay, so we're checking the conditions, the buy and the sell conditions. Uh, for the for the buy condition, we're looking to this exponential moving average. If the 10 exponential moving average crosses above the 20, then we look to buy. Otherwise, we check the condition for the sell, which is if the 10 exponential moving average crosses below the 20, then we look to sell. So how do we do that on our, uh, our FX dream? How do we get our bots to look for those things? So we go back here. We've, we're putting a condition variable here. So what we want to do is, so what we'll do is just, I can just edit this. Now this is this is just for cosmetics. You know, if, you be, if you're building long, a, a, quite a complex project, you'd have lots of parameters. And it's always nice to name them so you can always um, know what you were trying to do there. Okay, so we'll just name this by condition. That means, okay, um, so uh, this just keeps happening. Okay, um, so like I was saying, we rename this by condition. You know, this is just so that we can know what we were trying to do here. Uh, however, the actual condition would be what we modify inside of it. So if you double click on it, right, you can see. Um, uh, so you can see it's kind of like a comparison. Um, the condition is like if this side is less than this side, or if this side is equal to this side, is however you put it. So what are we trying to do? If you go back here, we are looking to check the 10 exponential moving average and the 20 exponential moving average, okay? And see if the 10 exponential moving average has crossed above 20. Now, um, you can see there are a lot of things we can do here. Indicator can do lots of things, but we are looking at the, we're looking for the moving average and the moving average is an indicator. So you can see we select indicator, we select moving average. You can see there are a lot of other indicators here. We'll work with some of them in the future, okay? So we want to see if the 10, so we just named this 10, exponential moving average, so we we'll change simple exponential moving average, the method to exponential. We want to check if it, it has crossed over, that has crossed above what the 20 exponential moving average. So what we just did here is we just impute, we're saying if, right, 
the 10 exponential moving average crossed above the 20 exponential moving average. Now, there's another important thing you want to do under more conditions with regards to candle ID. You... Okay, so um, you want to make the candle ID one. Okay. Yeah, so you want to make the candle ID one. And the reason for that is, uh, so let me come over to our chat here. Now, the way the MT4 or the MT5, the way it sees or reads the candle is such like this. The current candle has an ID of zero, right? The previous candle has an ID of one. And like so, this one will be two, this will be three and four and so on. So that means as we're going back here, as you know, as we go behind, the, the ID of the candle is increasing. Now, we want to check that the crossover has happened at the close of the candle. So what we want to do is at the, when a new candle starts, we want to check if the crossover has happened. So for instance, um, let's see where it, so a crossover happened here, right? Now, what, when this crossover would have actually happened would have been where at the close of this candle, which is at the start of this candle here, right? So what that means is at the time, this candle will have an ID of zero and this one will have an ID of one. So if the EA check and see that this has happened, it will, it will see that at the close of the, at the beginning of this candle, and then it open itself. So that's what we're looking to do. Okay, so let's go back to our um, FX streamer. And that is why we have our candle ID set to one. So we'll have this also set to candle ID one. And then we'll click on updates, right? So basically what we've done is, uh, so let this update. So what we've done, Basically, is we're saying or we've said, okay, if the 10 exponential moving average cross above the 20 exponential moving average, if this condition is met, then what do we want to do? We want to buy. So we we'll just drag our buy now um, variable here, right? So if this condition is met, we'll buy. And we do the same thing for the sell. But there's something that we're also going to do here is this. So instead of having, um, instead of having so under our condition, so instead of having putting 10 here and 20 here, what we're going to do is we're going to declare them, uh, we're going to declare them as declare these variables before, you know, how do I put this now? In a super class. So essentially, under here that says constants and inputs, if you click on this, it says declare constant or variables. Okay, so we want to declare constants. Now there are different data types. So double, so just a quick one. Double is a data type for numbers that have decimal place. Okay, um, integers is it? It's a data type for whole numbers, right? Um, strings is a data type for text. Boolean is a data type for um, true or false. So you get the idea. So um, we're going to declare um, so integer. So what is going to be int int, and it's going to be the exponential moving average. Um, so we're going to call the 10 exponential moving average EMA fast. That's exponential moving average that is fast, right? So let's call this EMA underscore fast. And we're going to give it a value of 10, right? And then we're also going to call to make another variable, also integer. This would be EMA slow, right? And we're going to give it a value of 20. And then we're also going to have our lot. So our lot size is also going to be a double. So our lot size is going to be double because a double is decimal place number. So lot size can be 0 0.01 or 1 or 1.4. So we're going to make it a double and we'll call this lots, right? And we're going to use a lot size of 0 0.1, right? And then um, what again do we need? A stop loss and take profit. So let's declare our stop loss and take profit value. Uh, let's, so it's going to be integer, uh, we'll call it SL. And let's make our stop loss 50 and uh, we'll also make another one. This would also be integer, and let's call it CP, and we're going to make it 800, and then we'll click on update. So what we've just done is we've just declared these variables, right, or this constant. We've just declared them so that we can always, we can reference them during, um, throughout the life of the FX of this particular work project. So what, by saving it or by declaring it um, like this, we can always reference it within our project. Okay, so uh, once that is done, uh, okay, uh, 
Yeah. So once that is done, what will happen is if you check here, if we go back here now and click on our buy condition. So instead of using um, the simple Okay. Uh, okay, so um, this is. Okay, um, so uh, very sorry, this is actually quite annoying. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we would reference, um, so instead of using MA period 10, We'll just use MA period. So we'll right click. So what I'm doing is just right click on that place there and select fast. So you can see it still has the same value of 10. But what this does for us is by doing it this way, when we are running our bot or we are back testing it, we can actually change this value. So let's say we test moving average 10 and 20, and it, you know we don't really like the result. We can and we want to maybe change it to 20 and 50 or 50 and 100. We can just obviously just switch the value without without having to come back here to the uh, FX Dreamer to recreate it again. So from the bot itself, under the Impute tab, we can change these values. Okay, so we'll just select MA10, right? And then here we'll also select MA um, Slow, which is the 20, okay? And then we'll click on Update, right? Now, basically what we've just done now is we are saying if there are no trade, right? So if no trade, look for all buy conditions. So from this orange one, we we'll drag it to the top of it. We look for the buy conditions as if the exponential moving average 10, the 10 exponential moving average has crossed above the 20 exponential moving average, we want to buy. So if you double click on this, we'll now adjust the parameter for the buy. So what lot size do we want it to execute? Remember our entry criteria. So it's 0 0.1 we want, but we we'll select it here. So we can also obviously change it. Our stop loss, we're going to use a fixed pip for this one. So instead of, so we'll just right click and make our stop loss 50. Uh, take profits, we're going to also make it 100. So, you know, so instead of typing it here, we can use this so that we can obviously adjust them uh, while our, our code is on. So we'll click on updates. So what we've just done now is we've done the buy condition. So if there are no trades, it will check. If there are no trades, it will check. And then if the buy conditions are met, it would open a buy. Now we also need to do the same thing for the left, for the sell side. So we go to condition, we you know select our, another condition um, um, variable here. We we'll double click, let's just write, we name it sell condition. So sell condition, right? So we we'll double click on it to modify it. So what's the sell condition? So if we go back here, you'd see that our sell condition is if the 10 exponential moving average cross below the 20 exponential moving average. Now, just as a point of note, you know, this statement, you, you, there's no, you can say it in two ways. You can say, um, so if 10 exponential moving average cross above the 20, it's the same thing as saying if the 20 cross below the 10. So either way is right. It's just how you, you choose to write it. So even if you write, if the 20 cross below the 10, that's still the same as the buy condition. Or here you say, if the 20 cross above the 10. Right, it's just the statement itself should be correct, right? So for the cell condition, we are going to check if the 10 exponential moving average cross above the 20. So let's go back and, and do that here, okay? So what, what are we looking for here? So the 10 exponential moving average, instead of writing, uh, instead of writing 10 here, we'll select our EMA first. Make sure it's the exponential moving average. Remember, we want to set candle ID to one. Right, and then here we're going to also make this EMA fast or slow. Make sure it's the exponential, and also select candle ID to what to one as well. And then we click on update. Okay, so what we've just done now is we've set the condition for sell. Right, so you can just drag from the same orange, not the yellow, the same orange to the top of this. And then what if this condition is met? What do we want to do? We want to sell now. So we would. Um, select this like so, and uh, then we would modify the cell to impute our stop loss, our take profits, and our lot size, okay? So basically what we've done is, well, if there are no trades, right, look for, at this buy condition. If the buy condition is met, open the buy. Otherwise, look at the sell condition, and if the sell condition is met, open a sell, right? So let's do that. We uh, drag this like so, double click here, 
to um, modify um, the, the values to what we want. And you can see uh, once we once we have the cell um, conditions, um, not the, so this is the cell condition. Once we have the cell parameters put in place, that's our first box. So essentially, we've done we've basically built our first box. So we we'll set this to lots. Our uh, stop loss, you can see it says stop loss mode. So we we'll select our SL, take profit mode, we we'll select our CP, and we'll click on update. So this, my friends, is our first bot together. Now, this simple code here that we just did here is um is the bot that enables us to take advantage of moving average crossover. This very simple thing here. I right, don't worry, we'll look to build um, even more bots. Uh, at least I'll give you um, some clues as to how we can build more bots. And then you can use this, the same idea to um, build your own bots for your own systems because you have all the valuable information you need. So that's about it for this particular session. In the next class, we would um, take this bot that we've just built and then we would backtest it on the MT4, right? And uh, we'll see what the result looks like. And then we'll, um, you know, you know, we're using a fixed stop loss and a fixed take profit. I'll show you how we can uh, use a dynamic stop loss and a dynamic take profit instead of this fixed one for this specific strategy. And we'll see how that goes, okay? So thank you. Um, sorry for all these stop stats. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great one.